with uh, nothing to do with the case uh, in front of us. Um, I have that as a first. If not, then um, uh, Sarah did issue some minutes. Um, and can I get a motion to uh, approve those minutes? So moved. And a second? Second. And uh, uh, any discussion or amendments? I thought they looked okay, but I, uh, uh, if anybody picked up yeah. on something else that needs to be tweaked, um, speak yeah. up. If not, we have a motion and a second uh, to approve the minutes. All in favor? All right, Paul? Uh, uh, yes. Mason? Yes. Jen? Yes. David? Yes. And Kevin? Yes. All right, unanimous. All right, good. Um, so now we're on to uh, the uh, first case, which is a continuation of notice of intent for mediation of contaminated soil and bank stabilization, uh, proposed work to occur within uh, the Bank Riverfront, land underwater and bordering land subject to flooding, all on the Mill River. Um, and uh, this is a continuation from a, a prior meeting where we were making considerable progress and uh, Sarah has uh, roughed out a proposed set of additional conditions uh, uh, that we would want to build into an order of conditions. So I hope everybody's had a chance to mm -hmm. uh, review those. Yep. Um, and so with that, I'll turn to the applicant and say uh, anything you want to bring us up to date on or by way of introduction or uh, speak to the uh, proposed uh, uh, conditions that uh, uh, Sarah has uh, constructed. Uh, Barry Fogel, I'm here, as you can see, with Alan Verson, the applicant, Lyons Witten is the licensed site professional, and Josh Charette, our wetland scientist. How's everybody? Happy New Year. Yeah. Um, we are, we appreciate having had a chance to see that list that Sarah put together. That was uh, quite good. Um, we have nothing more to provide in the way of information, although, um, Sarah, I, I, you probably in your um, draft orders or in your order, do you list the different, you know, you have the revised plans. We did send in an um, invasives removal for the Japanese knotweed. I don't know if you wanted to make a reference to that. Yeah, so uh, this, these are just the attachment pieces of it. The order itself will have a list of all of the relevant uh, plan sets. And I did distribute both the revised set and the um, invasives plan to the commission. So that, that letter got around as well. That's it did, yep. Good. Um, you know, the, there was probably just, I mean, the only, I don't know if it's something you do as a standard thing, but in the introduction, the third paragraph, you mentioned 310 CMR 10.21 through 60. And because this is inland, we would, normally it would be 10.51. Um, but I mean, I'll, I'll check that. I might've yeah. just hit the wrong. Digit yeah, no, that's on my keyboard. Unless, unless sea level rise gets a whole lot greater. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully we're not dealing with 10.21. Um, I don't think there's anything else. The, the only um, one thing Alan and I exchanged an email on today was in terms of the fence, whether it would be um, you know, in segments where there would be areas where the fence would be higher or the yeah. Alan, was there something about that you wanted to address or? Uh, yes, I, I would. Um, uh, it's it appears from the way what is it section 34 is written it says any fencing uh, so i would take that to refer to the entire length of the fence of the chain link fence along riverside drive um it, it would be i think unnecessary and um duplicative and fairly labor intensive to cut the bottom six inches off the entire fence. Uh, if we did it, um, uh, I don't even know if that was the intent. If I would suggest maybe do it every fourth panel, have a six inch by three foot length that would be eliminated to allow 
little critters to pass under it. Um, I, yeah, I think the fence has to rest on the ground, I believe, or on the bottom rail. So to cut the whole thing off might destabilize the fence. Uh, so I, that if we did it every fourth panel, six inches high by three feet long, I, I think that would accomplish the objective. How do uh, uh, commissioners feel? Uh, by the way, I have been. I'm on the phone now because I've been disconnected uh, by my computer again. Uh, I have to oh. get a diagnosis here. But what's going on? But anybody, uh, uh, I, w I might argue. Uh, how long are the, each panel between the uh, vertical posts? Twelve feet. I, yeah, I would. Ten feet. More than four feet. I. I Honestly, don't I haven't measured. I, but if if four feet in the middle were cut off, that would leave something on either end, I would think, to support the chain link fence. Right. Um, and there are others um, who know more about the uh, behavior of, of small animals than I, um, but I would think uh, that uh, maybe every other or every third panel, um, so that if uh, um, uh, you know possum, skunk, raccoon, whatever uh, is bumping up, they'll kind of do a little searching. But if if they have to go 60, 80 feet uh, to find the next hole, that might be a bit of an obstacle. So I, I and I'm not sure about that. I'm not knowledgeable about uh, animal behavior that way, but mm -hmm. uh, every fourth panel, depending on the length of the panels, uh, every fourth panel might uh, not quite accomplish what we're trying to with small animals. Uh, I would uh, guess that they're, I would guess that they're probably eight to 10 feet long. So- 10 feet is point. typical. 10, yeah. feet. 10 feet is typical, okay. Yeah. So that would be every 40 feet, there'd be a opening. Is that too much, too long? I wouldn't think so. So let's call it every three panels. Mm -hmm. That that would be. I think that would be okay. Yeah, that would that would be fine with me. Good. Okay. Um, other um, questions or observations about uh, from the applicant or from. Uh, commissioners about the uh, draft plan. Um, there are one or two items, Sarah, which you were proposing, but encouraging that we have a uh, discussion um, during this meeting uh, rather than, and I'm, I'm, I apologize, but I'm having trouble even calling up on my computer because it's disconnected again, um, calling the document, uh, your attachment A up on my computer. So and I did not print it out. Uh, but there was one thing that you said that should, there should be some additional discussion. I'm just forgetting which item that was. One of those was the requirements for plantings. Uh huh. Yes. So the the uh, uh, including some higher canopy, uh, eventually higher canopy level uh, plants, not just uh, shrubs and and ground cover. Yeah. So uh, as proposed in the um, in the application documents, it was indicated that natural long-term repopulation would be sufficient to um, provide vegetative cover, but that would really limit species to those found on site. Um, so making some selective plantings would some create some opportunities for shading and food and habitat and more plant diversity. Um, but you know rather than just leaving, uh, the specifics of the approval of the planting plan completely up to staff. It would be great to specify you know, a minimum number of species of each type. And that would, since the uh, uh, what we're trying to accomplish here is a, a net improvement, um, uh, increasing the diversity of uh, species of plants would uh, would represent an improvement. And there had been some concern, even though. 
this is all on the north shore, and therefore the sh big shade trees are, are not as effective at creating cool water for the fishery um, as they would be on the south shore. Uh, but still, if you had at least a, uh, uh, a few substantial, you know, maybe 15, 20 years from now, substantial uh, upper canopy trees uh, on the north shore, that that would, and especially as Sarah says, it, they were adding to the uh, species diversity of that area of forest, that I think that would be um, a desirable thing. Kevin, the, um, the language that Sarah put in is planting shall include overstory trees and understory shrub species and shall include low height species within the geo cell area and all tree species will conform to those included in the city's approved tree species list. So that's pretty good. Yeah, it sounds pretty good. If I could make the point i'm not sure that we can plant in the geo cell area the geo cell is there to stabilize the soil and to cut it open to allow planting in it that's that would be very either on the bank of the river or at the uh, right over the top of the where the bank will be so the the response to OTO's comments indicated that larger height tree species would be an issue within the geo cell area because they, you know, eventually could fall and damage the bank, but didn't specify that any plantings within the geo cell area would create a concern. Yeah, I was going to try to invite lions to um, speculate, so to speak, on where might there be areas in the project area, if you will, and not in the in the stockpile and not on the slope where larger vegetation could be established. Is there are there places that you can think of in the work area, so to speak, that or the affected project area where that could be encouraged without disrupting anything? Certainly at the perimeter of the uh, wetland replication area, um, there could be larger species that is outside the geocell. Um, could have some small holes in the geocell uh, for low height shrub but not anything taller than a person you, you'd want it you'd want it to be a low height shrub and um we like, really don't we really don't want anything tall growing on the slope yeah. that's yeah and and the intent attractive. of that specific language was to create a little bit of flexibility to make it clear that a, a large tree species wouldn't be required in the geo cell but yeah. just make it so that there wouldn't be an area that's completely devoid of native plants and may just turn into you know a big invasive mess. I, I actually thought that wasn't a bad condition if it had one tweak, which was actually rather than prior to construction that it be after construction. Because I thought that it would you know, sort of like, we'll know it, we'll know where things can be planted when the whole thing is done and we see what's to sort of where the limits of the geo cell end up, and we can do an as built post construction of the geo cell and of the uh, slope stabilization. And then we can get a landscaping plan put together that says, how about putting planting some particular species mm -hmm. here and there? So, guessing in a sense prior to construction would be hopeful, whereas after the work is done. That's a good opportunity, I think, for Lions' team and the contractor to figure out and you know where can we put this stuff. You know, does that make sense to sort of switch it from rather than prior to construction to after? Yeah, I mean, so that sounds reasonable. Yeah, the reason for requiring the plan prior to construction is typically because so many applicants will just never do it otherwise. Um, but in due to the unknowns of this project it, it does seem to make sense more appropriate to have have it afterwards yeah. um 
but I, I would just want to make sure that it's done, you know, immediately following right. the construction of the lines of the area. So, Sarah, yeah, um, and the commission, there's an area um, on either side of the IVW um, that is behind the maintenance access road um, on the Riverside Drive side of the maintenance access road, where during construction, we will selectively place um, log mats for the stabilizers of the crane and, and um, the excavator. Um, but their um, road word away from the river from um, where the, the extent of the GSL. And, and those places, those would be good places to, to have plantings. Um, they'll have more water and they're not in the GSL and they're not in the stockpile. Um, and they'll have minimal disturbance because the log mats will be there periodically, but it's, it's the strip where we're not taking trees down. Um, and at least on the, I'll call it the Southern side of the IVW, there really aren't trees there anyway, uh, right now. Um, so it would be in a place where a couple of trees could be placed. It's, it's not that big, it's kind of long and skinny, but it. Sure. So I think Sarah, if we, if the condition were changed to say, you know, following immediately following construction, as you said, I yeah. think that's the right word. Um, and and in order to obtain a certificate of compliance, and then blah blah blah, you know. But I think I think making it a immediately following completion of the geo cell and so forth um, would would work. Alan, right? I mean, sort of the timing of it makes more sense than trying to guess at it. Right, and immediately following assumes that it's in a time of year that would allow plantings? I meant for submission of a plan. So it would, it would be, oh, okay. the applicant shall provide a plan. And that, that would also, that's another reason why the timing is important because depending on where things finish up, the plan might be with the spring planting season, this shall be done, or but if it's completed in July, you know, June, there might be the fall planting plan. This also goes with the timing of the invasives management of applying the foliar to the knotweed and getting rid of that before planting new stuff in that area too. <laughs> so they kind of merge um, with those two factors. So that seems fine. Um, I would just recommend that the commission include a, a minimum number of each type of um, planting, you know, be it understory shrub stories and larger trees, just to so that you know, if the applicant comes back with a plan that has, you know, six plants on it, that I have guidance to point to to say that that's not sufficient. Do you have a suggestion, Sarah, for the uh, uh, the, the right number and uh, whether you know hardwoods or um, something that will eventually be in the 40, 50 foot plus vertical? A range. I mean, I think we could we could leave the individual species for the most part up the, to the applicant. You know, there's a lot of different types of yeah. trees and shrubs that would be appropriate for that site and would and would make sense. Um, you know, including things that are creeping um, northward in their range with climate change. That would be great to include. Um, but it, you know, at least the the minimum number. I mean, there's 96 large trees being removed. Yeah. We don't have a handle on the types of shrubs. Um, but, you know, working from that would make sense. We, I, and um, lions and Barry and Al, we don't, do we know how many, what the DBH of those trees is? I know it, we don't require that it be measured because it doesn't need any zoning relief, but that would, yeah. if you know it, that would provide some guidance. There's a few big ones. Um, I think that, you know, the standard language you, and Alan, <laughs> Don't get upset, but you know it's typical for this kind of a condition to say, following the complete, you know, immediately following the completion of construction, a plan shall be submitted for review 
in consultation with the commission and its sure. agent. You know, so we can figure this out yeah. at the time. Um, you know, but acknowledging that it's something that the applicant and you folks will sort of work out. And and I think I might add uh, that uh, the commission uh, could conduct a site visit at that stage where at, you know most of the work has been done. Now it's time to uh, be planting, um, and we could uh, be also part of that decision making about ah, it looks like you need 15 substantial trees of such and such uh, ultimate uh, height or, or uh, girth. Um, Whereas right now would be, I, I feel like we'd be just guessing. Um, yes. Uh, without yeah. actually walking through the property again. That sounds fine because I would be concerned. It, it's a fairly um, limited area, as Lyons referred to. Uh, we can only squeeze in. We're only going to be able to squeeze yeah. in a certain number of trees. Uh, so it yep. might make sense to yep. look at it at the time. Yep. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other of the uh, proposed conditions that need additional discussion uh, before we uh, finally close the hearing? Oh. I thought that never happened. <laughs> no, there were no other, none of those other, thank you, Sarah, for drafting it, but there were no other items in there that we had any questions about. I was clean shaven before we started this proceeding. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, if, if, uh, if nothing else, uh, Sarah, anything else you uh, want to have the commission opine on before you are uh, just uh, capturing and recording the, the uh, ultimate order of conditions? Uh, I, I just want to make clear that the, the finding that the uh, commission needs to make is that the entirety of the work reference will qualify it as a limited project. And that, that opens the door for the, the portions of the work that, are, um, that don't meet the performance standards, which are pretty significant. Right. In, in this case, due to the nature of the work. Um, and then just public comment after that. And then I, if the commission is happy with these conditions, I think we're all set. Okay. Um, and it, as I read uh, section, I remember it, was, it ended with a Q. <laughs> uh, as I read through all, all of that, uh, seemed like, yeah, I'm, I'm confident in saying that this uh, can meet the definition of a limited project. And so the rest of the commission agree with that? Yes. Any Anybody who doesn't, since I can't see uh, a screen with all your faces at this point. Mm -hmm. I would agree. Yeah. All, agree all, well. right. all right, then, uh, before we uh, close the hearing, are there any comments from members of the public? If not, uh, just one small thing on number 35, um, about halfway down, Sarah, it's to what extent, not an extend, the uh, uh, replacement. Oh, thank you. Just and to show you, I, I read. There I were a few reads. typos that I already had, <laughs> that I already fixed, and we were going through this. But thanks for that. I, I, I tried raising my hand. Uh, Rick Hudson here. Uh, there are yes, sir. Some next to the river, about halfway down, what is, I, I'm not sure what north and south sides, the river runs north to south, but on the project side, uh, that probably could take some sycamores uh, right next to the river. Uh, and that might be one place to, uh, to plant stuff. There's some similar, you'll see it if you come out here and look at it because there's already some sycamore there now. Also, if we could um, keep the tree similar to what's there now, uh, that would be nice. Uh, experimenting with evergreens and stuff, given uh, how quickly they seem to die these days, seem to be a little bit more dicey. 
Well, and that part of the uh, planting plan, as we've uh, just discussed, would be completed uh, following most of the construction. What I actually plan to do is to walk uh, the property again prior to the start of con uh, construction and take a few fo photos so that I can anchor in my memory uh, what's there now that we can include uh, in our thinking about what we uh, think ought to be uh, created as a, a an eventual as built of uh, the, 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 the trees and foliage that we want to have in the eventual as built plan. So, um, but I think, yes, getting down to those kinds of specifics, exactly where and of what variety, well, that, as we just discussed, that'll happen at the end of the project rather than right now. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And this is in the nature of a question, but the, plan specified a four foot vinyl covered chain link fence. And it was unclear whether that was going to replace the current um, six foot chain link fence that is now around the property. And uh, nice if it did that way, um, well, I, I sent a letter about it, so I don't repeat it, but uh, I, I just wanted to get a clarification on that. I don't recall uh, uh, the, the I don't recall that provision in the plan, uh, four foot uh, uh, vinyl coated. But uh, so someone on the applicant uh, team want to speak to that? I um, I just don't recall that piece of the uh, of the plan set. There's a new. This is Lyons Witten. There's a, a new fence to be installed from Valley Home Improvement along the river side of the stockpile. And that is the, would be a continuation of the four foot vinyl fence that's behind Valley Home Improvement and the Cutlery Building now. The remaining fence along Riverside Drive is a, currently a, security fence to keep people out and right that fence is not proposed to be changed other than the holes that we talked yeah, we about at discussed. the beginning of the hearing but yep okay okay um, um one last thing to add um applicant team i'll just need a revised uh noi page that includes the riverfront area disturbance now that the access drive is proposed to be permanent uh, so i don't need the whole noi just just that one sheet so i have an accurate figure to be able to issue the order get you that okay any other comments before we close yeah, sarah can i just ask one question about <clears throat> the requirement that um let's see the 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 trees should have three growing seasons. It's gonna be fairly easy for us to get plant trees to survive where they're going to go because it's a fairly wet area. I, I, I don't think it'll take us, take you three years, three growing seasons to see that they're successful. And what that would do is keep the um, certificate of compliance in abeyance for an additional entire year when it's already clear that they're growing fine. Could, is there any possibility of shortening that to two, two growing seasons? Our, our usual practice in such cases is for three. Um, Do you use uh, spring, fall, spring or fall, spring, fall as three seasons? Three growing seasons. Uh, we would take three. No, we we would uh, be talking about um, pretty much annual review. A complete uh, growing season would be from spring to freeze. That would be that would be a single growing season. And normally, when we have these kinds of uh, replantings, uh, that we do require that seventy five percent survival after three. Of growing seasons. So three calendar years. 
So that, yeah, so that ends up being three calendar years since spring is from, or uh, growing season is from spring to freeze. Well, all right. If that's standard, Alan, I think that's if that's what they do. Right. Yeah. In in situations yes, where, but... where an applicant needs to demonstrate that, you know, the the critical pieces of the project have been completed, we could always do a partial certificate of compliance and, and leave the right. We have we have, the we have done partial certification. Okay. All right. Um so, can I get a motion to close the hearing? So moved. Mason with his beard. Uh, <laughs> uh, is there a second? I'll second it. We don't want his beard any longer. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> and uh, uh, any uh, discussion? Um, if not, all in favor. Uh, so this is just for closing the hearing. Paul? Yes. Mason? Yes. Jen? Yes. And Kevin? Yes. All right, the hearing is finally closed. Um, mm -hmm. And we have a, a quite substantial uh, uh, order of conditions, uh, both including standard and special conditions for this project. Uh, any further discussion on that? Or can I get someone to make a motion to uh, grant this order of conditions. I'll move again. I'll second. Very good. And a second? Second. And Jen second. All right. Uh, all in favor? Sarah, roll call. Paul? Yes. Mason? Yes. Jen? Yes. And Kevin? Yes, indeed. Right. Unanimous. <laughs> David, I didn't, I didn't forget you, but. Right. I know. This, okay. <laughs> All right, unanimous. Thank you. All right. Well, good luck to all of you, and uh, we'll be staying in touch. And um, like I said, I plan to go out there before uh, the project starts and refresh my memory and take some photos so uh, uh, I can do a before and after once the, we get together for that part of the process of uh, the final planting plan. Oh. All right. Thank you, then. thank you very much. Thanks. Good work. Good luck to you. Thank you. All right. We see Mr. Witten at um, the uh, railroad show. Two weeks. <laughs> All right. Well, um, uh, we did minutes and we did uh, this uh, uh, case and uh, finally moved it along. Um, any other business before the commission, Sarah? Uh, I, I don't really have much at this point. Uh, we were able to close on, um, on a piece of property in the Broadbrook Fitzgerald Lake Greenway, which is exciting. You approved it several years ago. It was a it's sort of a long time coming. Um, hmm. But I, I can send you all a map of that one just to show where we're at. But, uh, Fitzgerald Lake has gotten quite large. Hmm. Uh, over a thousand acres now? Yes. Very wow. Uh -huh. That's great. <laughs> And is that off Boggy Meadow Road to the sort of northeast? Uh, it is. So this one was it was sort of an, an in-holding off of um, Coles Meadow Road. Uh -huh. so pull it up for everybody. Uh -huh. um, this, I don't know if anybody saw the paper. Was the, the Dorkel project? So this was... Let's see. Well, she's searching. I just want to say attachment A is an exceptional piece of work for the project we just a did. Big, a, a big piece of work. So uh, the project, the property that the city just closed on is is this piece here. Oh. It really was right in the middle. Oh, that's uh, great. 
of the Greenway yeah. just south of the Hatfield line. Uh, and it doesn't provide access all the way to Coles Meadow Road, but we do have access other places on Coles Meadow. So that's exciting. Oh, uh -huh. great. Great, so that's just for information. You don't need no, us to do anything no action, at this point? No action okay. necessary, just an update we finally close on that. Yeah. Very good, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and no staff issued permits or um, other business not foreseen? No, not at this point. And I think the only thing that we'll have on the agenda in two weeks um, at this point, unless something comes up, which I don't anticipate, is just a, a very quick request for certificate of compliance. So I may even check in to see if we can meet at some other point just to deal with that one and not have to meet on the 26th. Uh -huh, okay. And hopefully by then I will have uh, gotten my computer and router through marriage <laughs> counseling so they're talking to each other again. Yeah. <laughs> That's so frustrating. Um, all right, and, and I've been uh, mulling over uh, Jen, um, I'm uh, there's a, a, I'm on a couple of other boards, and one of those I'm leaving. I'm on the board of Tapestry, and I'm leaving that as of uh, June 30th. Uh, and so uh, I may be uh, uh, the volunteer to uh, sit on the uh, community uh, uh, investment. Uh, uh, and so uh, I haven't finally decided, but I and I certainly wouldn't mind if anybody else. Uh, I wanted to volunteer. I don't need to, but if in order for us to have a representation, if uh, if necessary, as a retiree with a fair amount of time available, and I'm dropping off another board, I could uh, mm -hmm. pick that responsibility up. Nice, Jen. What's the annual cycle? When when does the next batch of uh, applications come in? I think Sarah, it's we're starting. Like you said, our next meeting is February. Yeah, so there, there's two cycles per year. Um, the mm. committee doesn't meet except for that. Um, first meeting is February 15th, and they'll be done, I don't have the schedule in front of me, but by the end of April. Uh, and then there's another round. So Jen will still be around for that one. And then there's another one in the fall. Uh, mm. that begins in October and goes through sometime in December. I see. Um, well, I, I, my time will be a little freer uh, uh, mm -hmm. by the end of uh, June. So, uh, if if no one else steps up, uh, I'll, I'll volunteer uh, to sit on that committee. Wow! Great. Or be our liaison with that committee. So. Thank nice. you. Thank you. Yeah, and well, I. thank I, you, Jen. Yeah, and I will stay on it until somebody replaces me. I'm not dashing out the door by any means and I again I really enjoy that work I wish I had more time for it I hope to do it again sort of in the future when I have a less demanding day to day right well it's good of you to do uh, and uh, good of you to hang in there until through this round and um, and then uh, like I said if nobody else steps up I, I can be uh, picking things up for the next round in the fall but uh, Great. All right, any other news or uh, uh, important things that people um, have been going through as we begin this new year, which certainly hope will be a better one than the last yeah. one? Yeah, I had a question about the uh, difficulty with dogs in, um, mm -hmm. is it the Robert Brooks area? Um, yeah. We're going to turn our attention to that sometime, I guess, in the spring. And I don't know if there's anything we should be doing in the meantime. Well, that's a good reminder because I had had a, an exchange with Chief Casper about the new uh, uh, dog officer she was going to be hiring, uh -huh. and I've dropped that ball because I don't I don't know Sarah. You may know whether they have uh, filled that position yet, but when they did. Uh, she was uh, going to be wanting to talk with us about allocating time um, from that position uh, to uh, be present at, at, at Fitzgerald Lake and possibly other places. Yeah, I, I don't know if that's been filled, but I can certainly check on that. All right, and I'll I'll, I'll check with Jody as well and see. Uh, and so, that, but thanks for that reminder. That uh, yeah, we uh, nor, <laughs> normally. Um, um, Mr. Zimmerman will be in touch to remind us that we have something pending, and he must have had a busy year end too because he didn't uh, 
uh, he didn't get on my case about, hey, well, we got to follow up on this. So, um, but I'm sure he won't forget entirely. So, uh, good. Thanks for bringing it back up. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to the chief or reach out to her by email and see if that position is hired. And um, what I think might be beneficial is, uh, if so, then uh, uh, she and uh, whoever they've hired. Uh, uh, have a brief meeting with us and uh, members, uh, Bob Zimmerman or whoever else, yes. uh, uh, Broadbuck, um, and say what would be helpful and kind of tailor the work of that new person to be helpful. Yeah, because uh, I don't think we're that up. talking about heavy handed enforcement. I think we're talking about um, a heightened level of education, uh, maybe assisted by a uniform. <laughs> And a and a presence, um, just a you know, presence, yeah. Uh, and if, if uh, we we may also, um, and I, this idea that Bob had that apparently a couple of other communities, in Massachusetts, do of having a, a sort of steward or ranger, uh, not a member of the police force, but nonetheless an official presence, um, uh, so we can think about if let's try the. Uh, the dog officer uh, route first right. and uh, then see what might be an alternative if that proves unsatisfactory. But right now, let's yeah. try that first. Yeah, I think the conservation commission uh, officer um, is in Carlisle or Lincoln, one of those two communities and uh -huh. is, a, is a model if the um, um, hire from the police department doesn't fill any of that role. Good. Actually, all right. I, I do have one quick update. Um, just all good yep. news. We received a two hundred fifty thousand dollar grant from the State Department of Ecological Restoration to continue our work at Pine Grove. Oh uh, yes, really exciting. Um, yeah, and that will also include some funding for parking lot design because it, you know that's really heavily utilized by people. Yeah. Um, we're yeah. planning and in, in installing an accessible trail there and a, a park. It's just a really small parking lot. Is uh -huh. it is. Is a real yeah. necessity and cars park along the road yeah and it's a mess yeah. you know with these increased freeze thaw cycles when it used to just be freeze freeze it's just turning into a, sort of a gross mud hole um and separately <laughs> Depar the department of ecological restoration is also working with us using state funding on moving forward with dam removal designs for the the impoundment there that was formerly used for irrigation ah uh -huh. um, okay good nice and good just news for general um, news. I um, completed unit 102 towards my certification of uh, understanding the Wetlands Protection Acts, state and uh, at state level. Um, and uh, it's really enjoyable. Ah, so it's, it, this has all been on Zoom or uh, yep. in some kind of self guided process? No, so it's back been, when I was uh, taking them, they were all in person and various. Yeah, no, it's two hour heavily PowerPointed um, um, instruction about um, uh, the Wetlands Protection Acts and um, the inland and coastal regulations. And um, it's interesting, uh, we're kind of lucky we don't have to deal with coastlines because there are 11 um, sections to the bylaws there and we only have five, I guess. So uh, <laughs> that makes life a little easier for uh, we in the inland communities. So, Paul, is this something you recommend for new members? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And they're doing a lot of the um, um, units in March. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah. if you go to the uh, Massachusetts Association of Conservation Commissioners, you can pull up their, their calendar of scheduled events. Uh -huh. Okay. And, and That's great. Is everyone receiving their newsletters? You all should be, but... Um, no, no. I'm not sure how up to date they are with inputting new members. The via, via email, right? They yeah. send those. Yeah. 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 I, yep. I'm getting them. Yeah, I don't think I get them. Yeah. I, I think I am too. I, I'll go double check. I'm certainly getting communications from Joey Wigglesworth. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If you're getting those, you should be getting the rest of the news. Yeah. yeah. Also. yeah. Yep. Very good. I don't think I'm getting anything from. Okay. Them. I'll, David, I'll check on that for you. They might just, I, I did give them your updated information. Yeah, okay. Uh, like, you remember I Joey? <laughs> you met him. Yes. You'll he's, remember. What's that, Mason? Yeah. 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 He's quite a character. Yeah. Yep. He's very he sharp. He knows his stuff. 
And Michelle All right. is really great. Yeah, okay. Very good. Thank you, everybody. Um, I'm glad to put this one, um, uh, well, it'll probably never go away entirely. <laughs> but I'm, I'm glad we've gotten through this stage. Yeah. But uh, yeah. these super fun kind of places are just going to be around for our grandchildren. So uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah. But I think as I said at one point to Sarah, this project wasn't perfect, but uh, uh, I think it, it was a reasonable judgment on our part that it passed muster. And the alternative, uh, hard to imagine without spending gazillions of dollars, which they wouldn't do yep. and don't have. Yep. Um, and so yep. uh, 20 years from now, we ought to be glad this happened. And, yes, um, exactly. And, yep. and you know, I, I do think the commission's work in this case and the, the many plan revisions resulted in a you know, a, a slightly a softer approach and a much better project than was initially proposed. Yeah. And the, the trout right, will thank us in 10 years for the um, <laughs> renewed shade. Right. Well, and Sarah, thanks to you for, because we, we, you know, we set the parameters and then you had to go hash this all out into a written yeah. form. So thanks so much for yeah. doing that Amazing. and doing yeah. it well enough. Yeah. They came back uh, pretty happy, um, which, Given how they started, uh, that, that, that that's real progress. So thank you. <laughs> I'd, I'd also like to thank people, Rick Hudson here. Uh, it, it was a hard job. Um, I may disagree with some of it, but I'm willing to uh, look forward to moving forward and commit to it. Okay. Thank good. you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, everybody. Good night. Um, good night. Thanks again. And, by ne but next time in a couple of weeks, uh, Sarah, I hope to have a, uh, a working Zoom uh, computer. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, can... Thanks, Kevin. Uh, Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Thanks. Good night. All right. Bye-bye. Yeah,